Are petrol heads doomed? Well, that's what we're going to find out on this episode. So this is the 100th episode of Charge Heads UK. We've been going for two years now with the sale of my 5 litre V8 TVR Griffith. I thought that this would be a perfect video and subject to kind of get my teeth into, talk about, and hopefully not upset too many people. Um, but yeah, just, just have a little talk about it. I mean, what I'm hoping to do in the next few episodes moving forward is getting a few of my die-hard petrol head mates involved as well um, so we can get a proper debate going on and just talk about the the pros, the cons and just, just have, have a laugh and just take the piss out of each other because that's what car people do, isn't it? So what is a charge head? Well, a charge head is a car enthusiast, most importantly, but also really interested in EV tech cars and everything you can do to them whether it's modify tune convert or and it doesn't have to be cars it can be trikes it can be i mean to a certain extent bikes but i try and keep it to the four wheel bases but uh you know there's room for everyone at the end of the day as long as it's exciting and it's fast or it's modified that's what it's all about so i've got a electric tvr conversion going on check out the videos it's a lot of fun we do joke around a bit me and ralph and just to make it a bit more entertaining but also try and learn a bit at the same time a couple of other things we've got on the channel which is rusty tesla which is the modified tesla model 3 long range which uh funnily enough had a little play with my mate in his uh evo uh 8340 fq and uh it had the edge it definitely had the edge and it's just the instant talk it just you know it just gets ahead of it every time. It's it's a quick car and it's not even the performance version, but there's a few things that you can do. So keep watching the channel if you want to know about upgrading Model 3 Teslas and what stuff you can do, because there's loads of stuff. Just check out America. There's loads of stuff that's going on there and it's only going to get bigger. The video above is a video of a little bit of my car history, just to give you a feeling of uh, where I've come from in terms of my car history. Because you might be thinking, this guy is all about electric cars, you know, he doesn't know about petrol cars. He's never been into them trust me i've i've had it i've been there i've done it but is that time nearly coming to an end no god please no no i've had you know drift cars i've had modified performance cars i've turboed cars and always been a massive petrol head and a couple of years ago i turned you're the only one who's finished pollution yes that's right i turned into a charge head now that's not what this video is about. This video is all about, about petrol heads becoming, you know, not really a common sight on the roads and what is going to happen to the people that live and breathe petrol cars. As many know, electric cars are becoming a common sight on the UK roads and that's down to, you know, the incentives that the government put in place, which they've chucked out the window now and company car tax being absolutely zero which is now two percent so there's been lots of things to encourage the adoption of electric cars um going from i think we're about 10 percent now i'll put in the bottom what the official figures are and for people who think oh yeah hydrogen's going to be the solution nah mate dave down the pub he's leading you down a path which is not very realistic um and you know time will tell maybe you can write a comment now but will you have that same comment in a few years time i don't think so now there's some probably going to be shouting at the screen saying no they're not i'm going to be buying the the dirtiest uh filthiest rawest loudest v8 v10 whatever v <laughs> or even uh, dirty diesel last car I possibly can run it into the ground you'll never get me into electric but you know with the uh, new taxations coming in I mean it's only a little bit here and there but it's, it's just going to get worse and worse don't forget about the congestion charges yeah there's one in London and it's growing to the M25 the ULED zone with the UK government enforcing a ban on petrol cars in 2030 and on hybrids in 2035 the road has been mapped out excuse the pun but, you know, it's, we're, we're going that way, you know, I'm now from the motor trade, I'm now into a charging company and I see so many businesses, public sector, all the different sectors moving, putting so much money, investing so much money. You look at all the vans, Amazon, DPD, all going electric. Why are they doing that? It's because it's saving them money and because that's the way that they've got to go because of all the 
um, framework that's been put in by the government. So with all this money being taken away from the government, think about how much money they make out of petrol and diesel, fuel, and obviously the tax costs and all the rest of it. How are they gonna get it back? Well, one of the ways that they're gonna get it back is with the tax increase, which is coming to start of April, but also congestion charges. Now, there's gonna be 21 new congestion zones. There's places like Cambridge, I'll put it up on the screen, Cambridge, Oxford, Birmingham. I think there's one in Bradford as well. Sorry, chaps. Um, so yeah, and plus the, obviously the London ULEZ zone is growing up to the M25. There are gonna be so many places where you're just gonna to have to keep shelling out, shelling out. Um, they're gonna get us anyway. We might as well just go on e-bikes, really. Let's get some modified e-bikes, and you can modify e-bikes. And check out my trikey video, um, which is the next video, which is us modifying the trikey, which is a bit fun. I'm gonna drive a V8 until I die. Well, yeah, I mean, you probably could. I mean, it's gonna be very expensive, to a point, very inconvenient being charged a lot in these congestion charges. Probably not as inconvenient as having a Nissan Leaf, which is 10 to 12 years old with 30 mile range, if you need to get to Cornwall. It's gonna take a good part of two days, no doubt, but not all electric cars like that, I hasten to add. I sometimes do some videos on this channel around electric used cars, trying to find the best value, and I'm gonna be doing one soon. So if you're interested in buying a used electric car, keep tuned, like and subscribe, as per the sign says, um, and check out the other content that comes on, because I do lots of different things around, you know, trying to get people into electric cars and for petrol heads, car enthusiasts that want to find out a bit more about exciting uh, electric vehicles. The EV market and sales are increasing at an amazing rate. I mean, just check, uh, check out this S curve in terms of the adoption of EVs. It just rockets. If you take Scandinavia, specifically Norway, 82% um, of their new cars are actually bought, are actually electric, and then about 8% are uh, PEV, which is uh, plug-in hybrid, and then the rest petrol diesel. So it's such a small percentage now, and that's because of all the legislation and everything the government are bringing in. Um, and believe it or not, their public transport is gonna be all electric by the end of this year. I think they're about five years ahead of us. So if you think in four or five years time, and I think the S-curve, you can see that the increase is really, really swift, that actually we might actually be at that point, a little bit sooner than five years. So this is gonna be a very interesting uh, market. Can you just imagine that for a minute? If 80 plus percent of new cars were electric, I mean, bear in mind a lot of company cars, you know, with all the incentives, that's what brings a lot of the electric cars onto the road. You know, imagine what the roads would look like then. And yes, there's still gonna be people that are gonna be you know, in their performance cars, in their classic, crazy, crazy modified cars. I've always liked modified cars. I've always liked exciting, loud cars. Um, but I have changed quite a bit, as you could probably tell by my channel. So another reason they're bringing in these congestion zones is because of the massive benefit of the uh, reduced emissions. And this is shown by the statistics that come from 2003. Nitrogen oxide has come down by 60%. Sulfur dioxide has come down by 24%. And carbon dioxide has come down 61%. That's quite big numbers if you think since 2003. So yeah, a much cleaner cities, uh, which would be nice. I mean, my preference is more micro mobility, get on those electric skateboards. the one wheel things and electric bikes and electric trikey of course any EV converted little um, uh, transport you can get your hands on anything that's pretty cool and wacky and out there I'm sure at this point there's some petrol heads out there that are shouting what about the children in the cobalt mines or the lithium mines they're not in the lithium mines they're in the co cobalt mines you're probably saying that while you're looking at your mobile phone which has got cobalt in its battery um, and also cobalt is actually used for refining uh, oil into petrol and diesel. You might already know that, um, but you might not know that LFP batteries, you know, being spearheaded by lots of companies, mainly Tesla, produce all these precious metals that everyone keeps banging on about because there is so much um, focus and passion and, you know, money going in to find more environmentally friendly ways because we ain't got long, you know, you check out the reports. 
doesn't matter what people say oh climate catastrophe it's not going to happen it's bullshit you know we are in a bit of trouble here so we need to kind of toe the line a bit yeah we can still have classic cars yeah we can still have fun cars but most of the transport it needs to be electric you know you can have fun in a daily you know talky electric car but i'd rather have fun in a talky electric car which is a bit different you know modified or you know something that's a little bit out there which is why i created charge heads in the first place and it's funny how uh, no one gave a fuck about cobalt and the mining of it for mobile phones and for you know all the other things but when it comes to electric cars oh fucking let's go after everything yeah because obviously you know it's not it's obviously not a silver bullet you know we've got to work towards um, improving the methods of creating electric cars and you know bearing in mind that Elon Musk in his last uh, report they did with Tesla they're going to be reducing the prices bear in mind they are the most profitable electric car company out there they make about 10 grand a car whereas Volkswagen they just about break even on electric cars plus the fact that Tesla can make them four times quicker than VW Tesla have announced that they're going to actually reduce their manufacturing costs by 50 percent so it's just going to become cheaper and cheaper to have an electric car although it looks like the tax is just going to be coming higher and higher and higher which is where um the robo taxis and the ai where am i you're in a johnny cab fasten your seatbelt. 18 credits please sue me dickhead which tesla constantly pushing you know the full self-driving which isn't full self-driving let's be honest it's getting there i've got full self-driving on rusty my tesla model 3 and it just shits itself when it gets to a roundabout <laughs> But on the motorway, it's awesome. Overtakes, does everything. Uh, it is really, really, really good. And But, you know, when AI is cracked for major cities and for, you know, uh, developed countries, because it's not exactly going to be cracked for Africa and random uh, random countries like that, realistically. But, um, you know, you've got your app in front of you, press a button, a bit like, you know, delivery or whatever. Car pulls up, jump in it. You can do whatever you want in the back or in the front, what have you, on the way to work or, you know, whatever you want to do while you're traveling there, make best use of the time. And these cars, because our cars are only used, I think it's about eight or 12 hours a week. The rest of the time, they're just sat doing naff all. Whereas these robo taxis, they can be used, I think it works out to be about 50 hours a week. So much more efficient. And my uh, mate, Stuart, who's a diehard petrol head. He's no, he was saying about, oh, you know, all the EVs like in a row, just being streamlined together and like nipping in and out, really, really close proximity. And I was thinking, yeah, that sounds really cool because that is potentially the future, which is, sounds pretty good if, if you ask me. But one issue that we've, massive issue we've got in this country at the moment is infrastructure. Yeah, if you've got a Tesla and it's not too busy, um, you know, and I've been to some busy ones certainly recently, um, it's just, yeah, the infrastructure's rubbish. Oh no, all electric cars are powered by coal. That's absolute bollocks. It's only, coal only makes up 1% of electric generation uh, last year. So uh, the chances are it's, it's pretty clean energy that's going in. Gas, not ideal, but cleaner than coal. And a lot more wind and solar is coming uh, into the, uh, and, and um, nuclear, of course, although quite a lot of nuclear power stations are going down, but it works out to be renewable energy, it works out to be circa 50%, which is a lot better than what Dave in the pub says, that's for sure. So going back to infrastructure, now I remember a, um, I think it was in the media saying, oh, the grid can't take it. Now, I saw that as, well, we can't generate enough electricity, but it's not that, it's the fact that um, and I've realized this now getting into charging, now uh, working for a charging company. It's just the grid, you know, there's not enough capacity because our grid is just so old. There's so much more money that needs to be plowed into it. The problem is our country ain't got no money at the moment. Uh, you know, they can't even give money to our nurses and our doctors and our firemen and our teachers. I mean, what what is going on? It's not good. We, we just have to just see what happens with that. You know, I know that there's a lot of charges going in. I think it worked out that in January or February, that in that month, more charges were put in than the whole of last year. And that just goes to show the progress that's being made. But according to the National Grid, there is enough power. So we'll just have to utilize our wall boxes for now. And if you haven't got a driveway, there's loads of options around charging. So curbside charging or lamppost charging, loads of options out there and councils have got a budget for this. So go and tap them up.
bearing in mind, not many people, other than myself, because I'm doing 25,000 miles a year, so I'm gonna have to utilize the uh, uh, DC fast charging around the country, a bit of volt and bolt, as they like to say. Um, but yeah, everyone else can utilize their seven kilowatt wall boxes, because most people don't do more than 100 miles in one day. And most electric cars can do that now, certainly 2020 onwards. Uh, and there are a lot of good used examples. You can now get a Renault Zoe for about 8,000 pounds, 40 kilowatt hour. That will do 150 mile realistic range. Um, Hyundai Ionic, that's about 13 grand. That will do fast charging as well. That will give you at least 150 realistic uh, range miles. Again, depending on how you drive it, winter, all these other variables. But electric prices are coming down. And like I said, I'll have a video about that coming up soon what the best electric cars to buy and what to watch out for. So back to the question, are petrol heads doomed? Well, just part that for a second because, you know, there are things and exciting things you can do with electric cars. I mean, for example, you can tune electric cars. Excuse me? Yes, that's right. You can tune them. Yeah, you can modify, you can wrap them, you can change suspension, upgrade the um, brakes, etc. But did you know, t Tesla Model 3, you can get the Tesla um, performance upgrade changes the dual range, um, long range Tesla Model 3 from 4.4 naught to 60 down to 3.7 naught to 60. Admittedly, the Model 3 performance is 3.1 seconds naught to 60. Take that into consideration that an Audi RS e-tron GT is 2.9. Um, bear in mind the Tesla Model uh, S played is 1.9. Taycan Turbo S versus Tesla Model S Plaid. Holy crap, he's gone. You know, there's some serious acceleration of electric cars, not only in the adoption, but also in the performance. But yeah, there's there's more stuff that you can do which uh, voids the warranty, you know, like everybody does with their current petrol cars. You know, the popcorn uh, exhaust pipes going on, pa bang, pa bang. <laughs> So the future for petrol cars and uh, petrol heads. So yeah, I think, you know, there's still going to be that crowd of petrol heads out there, whether it's people into their Honda, their VAG stuff, or, you know, the classic car lot. There's still going to be that, but it's just going to, it's going to be harder and harder and more expensive. There's going to be less places you can go. And eventually, I think what it's going to be, it's going to be, okay, well, you can only go to Silverstone or you can only go to this place. And it'll be to the point where it'll be so expensive, you'll have to trailer your petrol car to uh, the track or to this area uh, with your electric car, <laughs> ironically, um, to go and have fun with your loud, you know, smelly uh, petrol car. Hear the thrill and the throb of a petrol car. Um, so yeah, I think that is the future, a bit like horse racing. You know, we've, we've thrown this analogy around me and my friends for sure, and I'm sure you and other friends may have done a similar sort of thing, but I don't think it's going to be long. I think by 2030, I think it could even be like that by 2030. We're all car enthusiasts. Let's not make it tribal petrol versus electric. You know, we're all interested in cars, we're all interested in going fast or making it look good or what have you. Let's not make it tribal, let's bring ourselves together. Um, no one's doomed, you know, um, but it's just gonna become harder. But there are reasons for it, and I think it's just gonna, it's just brought in this new drivetrain of electric, this exciting chapter to the uh, car world, really. And that's why I thought I would just jump on it. I've gone all in. Charge heads, become a charge head. Be a petrol head, you can be both. It's absolutely fine, I don't care. <laughs> but if you're interested in watching more of the channel, check out all the other videos. We've got, you know, classic electric Porsche 911 on there. We've got uh, the TVR build. We've got loads, you know, all the electric shows as well. Like and subscribe, check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching.